is to build an organization. Standard company has a standard org chart. CEO in the middle, board of directors, and then functions, operations, general counsel, HR, product development, sales, marketing, finance, R&D, future investment. Same thing works for you. Same thing in career management that it is in business management. You have all the same functions. You have an ethical code. You have your own legal things that you have to deal with. We all have to do taxes every year. We all have to do um, you know, all that kind of stuff. You have your skills, your product. The product in your business is you. You want to develop the product, you develop yourself. You develop your skills. Then you have to sell yourself. You have to market yourself. You have to deal with money. And you have to deal with investment, research and development, new stuff. So everybody in the room who always says, who thinks to themselves in their cubicle or in their office, they say, you know what? If I ran the company, I'd do it better. This is your chance to run your company. You all have the power to run your own business. And you control the product. You don't have to worry if the product doesn't have the right features, because you can fix them. You don't have to worry if the product works. Just look in the mirror. So all these components here is that you have the ability to take your career into your own hands, but it takes work. And I think that everybody's career, I think that the most important thing when you start thinking about your career is the foundation that you're going to build your career upon. And a lot of times, to me, that foundation in business is ethics. Is that, and, and does anybody have an own definition of business ethics or how they define it? Okay. Don't do anything you don't want to Stay see in the newspaper Stay away tomorrow. from the New I York don't. Times. Next. Okay, yeah, that's good. I like that one. I, I think that those are all, you know, real good things. Is that, you know, I think that when it comes down to it, you really have to understand who you are. And this is one of my favorite poems. Um, I kind of got hold of this early in life. Um, and it really talks about being honest with yourself. Has anybody ever seen this poem? Have everybody... Is this, is this new or like an evolution or? Okay. Anyhow, I think that the idea is this, is that you have to understand who you are and you have to understand what you're willing to do and what you're capable of. And that comes from internal soul searching. But that foundation will, that will be the foundation that can, you can provide you the basis for all your decisions down the road in your business. Start thinking about your priorities. Anybody, anybody have a list of their personal priorities? Elements of it? A little bit. One guy in the back of the room. Um, I mean, I'll tell you what my priorities are. It's probably easiest, right? My number one priority is my family. Number one thing. More important than anything in the world. Then the second thing would be providing for my family. So that might be money. Then there are other things. Health. I mean, a lot of people are driven by how they feel. I'm a little heavy. It's not that big of a deal for me right now. I might get bigger later on. But you start thinking about all these different things about what's important to you. And you start laying those things out and start basing your decisions upon those tenets, upon that foundation. And what you ultimately have to do is you have to bring everything into alignment. The, the hardest challenge that I have in business is making sure that what we want to do as a company aligns with what we're actually doing. Who we want to be and where we want to go. And it comes back to the career plan, right? Um, it comes back to the business plan. You set out a statement up front that says, this is what I'm going to do. This is who I'm going to be. This is how it's going to go. And especially in business, you know, as a... It's really easy to chase anything that comes along. Um, you know, somebody comes along and offers you a deal that 
is not part of what you want to do. It's not part of what you want to build. It's not part of who you want to be. And you have to decide, is that deal worth taking to be misaligned, to be off the, the current path, to be taken aside? So you have to know your priorities, and you have to know what trade-offs you're willing to make and which ones you're not willing to make. Well, you know, a lot of times people have big goals, right? I mean, it's easy to have a big goal. But it's very hard to achieve the goal. The bigger the goal, the more work you have to put in. And the bigger the goal, the more people aspire to have that goal. Um, I would tell you this is that, you know, it's one of these items where when you look at it, you know, the more you're willing to sacrifice and put into something, probably the more reward you're going to get. So when you start thinking about that in terms of your career and you start thinking about what you're willing to do, is that if getting to where you want to go requires you to travel around the world and it's important for you to be home to pick up your kids from school, it's probably not going to align. So you have to figure out what's important to you and align it that way and be honest with what you're willing to put in because generally, what is it? You know, garbage in, garbage out, right? So if you start thinking about your career in those ways, you have to then, by aligning where you, the direction you want to head with what's important to you, you're more apt to get better satisfaction. You're more apt to accomplish a realistic career goal. So we'll ask the question. What matters to you? And when we did it, when we did our, um, one of our recent surveys, we asked this in a different way. What would you be willing to give up money for? I'd be willing to take less money for what? And what would it be for you? More training? More time at Black Hat? More time at home? Less travel? More health care? More responsibility? What, what would it be for you? I thought that the results of this was so, were so were interesting, right? I mean, we, we got about, it was like 460 respondents. We, do offer, we did this over um, two months in the spring of this year. And the number one answer, you guys will see the chart, is that 49% people, they said, I would give up money to save my ass. I thought that number would be bigger. I would give up salary to save my ass, generally speaking, but only 49%. So I thought that there was a lot of confidence out there. But the only thing that was next was training and education. 47%, statistically almost a dead heat, that people said is that getting more skills, training, and education is almost equivalent to saving your ass. We're an interesting industry like that. And the other three, you know, the next three things, you know, between we're all real quality of life issues, right? I mean... Um, Basically, f work fewer hours, more vacation, which are def I, to me, I think, are the same thing. And um, you know, the ability to telecommute, have some better you know, work-life balance. If you think about it, though, is that when you start thinking about your career and salary, that people are driven by things that make them feel better, that get them smarter. But you have to identify what's important to you. That is your business. Each business has different priorities you managing your career are going to have different priorities than your neighbor. So once you've figured out priorities, it's time to talk about product development. It's time to talk about your skills. And this is where, uh, you know, we're going to sound like the standard career people. We're going to talk about skills and certifications and all that kind of stuff. But it goes beyond just talking about um, skills. If you think about it, like running a business. How many of you guys are on the product side of this industry, work for a vendor, or have worked for a vendor um, at some point? Hmm. OK, about 10, maybe a little more percent. So product management, what do they do? What's a product manager do? Anyone? Right. They sit down, and they figure out all the, all the features of what a product needs. And it's not just you know, the bells and whistles. It's not just how the product is developed, but it's the whole product. It's what, how do we support our customers? How do we go to market? How do we sell this? It's the whole package. 
It's the same thing when it comes to you. It's not just a question of what certs do I need and what book do I need to read this year and do I go to Black Hat or do I go to Cansec West. It's everything about you. It's not just your technical skill. It's your strategic skill. It's your understanding of the industry. It's your understanding of the way that you interact with your business. It's the quote-unquote soft skills, your relationships with people, your interaction with your customers. Pop quiz, who's the customer of you, Inc.? What? Yeah. One thing that I will always say about a business is if you think everybody's your customer, you don't have a customer. Who's your customer? Today, who's your customer? What? I, sorry, I can't hear you. You're sick. No, you're not. Well, you're, you probably are your own customer. Your employer is your customer. Your employer is your customer. If you have a job, think about it. The customer is the person that pays you for what you do. Right? If I run a consulting company, my customer is the person that signs a contract with me and pays me to consult for them. Your employer is your customer. How do you interact with them? What do you bring to them? Is part of your product mix. If you're thinking of this as product management. Um, also, what kind of product are you going to be? Are you going to be a very boring, you know, I say boring, um, very, you know, standard stock, I wear a suit every day product? Or are you going to show up to work with blue hair? Every product is different. And you see this if you look at products through the market. It's part of the brand identity. It's part of the product identity. And you have to make all of these decisions about your product. The nice thing about it is you can upgrade that at any time. And we'll talk more about that later when we get into R&D. When you start thinking about your skill matrix, right? I mean, you know, we all have very hard skills. We're you know, good at technology. We understand risk management. We understand frameworks. But we start thinking about a skill matrix and start thinking about the skill matrix as not just your experience and your skills, but the ability to correlate those skills and then to communicate it to others that can make a difference. So it's the combination of understanding who you are, what you're doing, and your ability to then leverage these experiences to build a case to make it that your product is a great product. You have to build these cases. So when you start thinking about your career, start thinking about leveraging your experiences on top of each other. Because when you come down to it is that you eventually want to get to a point where to build these skills, you want to make sure you don't repeat. You want to make sure that your skills, the return on your investments are not diminishing. There's only so much that people will pay for certain skills. So think about it for a second. Think about, let's use an example from our industry. You're an antivirus company. You're Symantec. We all know that they don't have signatures for every virus. Why not? They could. You could hire a thousand signature developers and you could make a massive team and you could spend a huge amount of money to make sure that you had all the signatures, or at least as close to all as statistically possible. But there's no point, because they couldn't possibly sell the product for enough. It wouldn't be enough of a competitive advantage to sell the product enough to justify the spend. Same thing in working on your strengths. You can only be so good at one thing before it stops mattering. Before it's, you know, you can only be, you know, you can only be a great researcher to a certain point before being any better at it doesn't get you any more um, sales effectively. Well, the other thing is this, is that more, as more and more people acquire the same skill, you know, people talk in, um, a lot of times in sports, they'll talk about the value over an average player. So in other words, if the average center fielder, anybody like baseball? But if like the average center fielder hits... 275 and hits 10 home runs and drives in 60 runs, well, that's the average person. So if you, to build that the next step, you're not thinking about, well, how much added value is if my center fielder hit 280, hit 15 home runs and drove in 85 runs. So it's kind of like you start thinking yourself 